Hey guys, Corey here, Oval Edge RC. So I've been wanting to do this video for a while. I'm gonna to try to keep it pretty short, but the gist of it is stop buying professional 12 turn motors, okay? Why? Because they're selling you snake oil. And I'm gonna show you how, what they're doing. I'm gonna show you how to do it. And I can tell you that I consistently race against these companies' motors, and I consistently beat them and run with them. So I'm not saying that they're not fast. I'm just saying you can do what they're doing. And, and I'm not going to the store and I'm not buying 10, 12 turn motors and finding the best one. I go, I buy one or two. I do the same process on both of them. And I've never felt like I, I can't put one of my 12 turn motors in my car and compete. Um, so let's, let's get right into it. I'm gonna show you exactly what they're doing. I'm gonna show you how to uh, I'm not going to go through the water breaking process. Um, I'm going to explain how to do it, um, but there's plenty of videos out there to do it, and I've I've covered it in one of mine, so I'll link that in the in the description below. Um, but I'm going to show you what to do for the break in. I'm going to show you what to do post race to maintain the motor, and um, yeah, let's get right into it. You know what I mean? I want you to be a better racer, and this is really at the heart of why I have this channel. Um, I'm so tired. I'm so, I'm so tired of RC secrets and I'm so tired of people withholding information because they're, they got two tenths of a second on you at the racetrack. Like we're racing toy cars. And to be honest, I want you at the front with me so I can beat you at a driver level. I, I don't want to beat you because your car is not set up right. I don't want to beat you because you don't have, you haven't prepped your motor right. I don't want to beat you for the variety of technical reasons that I could beat you. Okay. I want to beat you on the track. I want us to be dodging and weaving, zipping and zagging and, you know, bumper to bumper the whole race. Because at the end of the day, that's why I do it. Those are the best races you can have. So let's dive right into it. All right. This is what we got. So I got a few things on the table here that we're going to go over. I've got a couple 12 turn motors. I've got what I call my motor dyno. I know it's not technically a dyno. But what this allows me to do is to set a baseline for my 12 turn motors. It allows me to measure the wattage and amps that are coming out of them. And that's how I can measure the speed of my motors. So whether it's right out of the bag, whether it's right off the racetrack, I understand what they are. And I, I mark all of my motors, how they're coming off of this machine. And all this is, this is like a $14 watt meter off Amazon. It's a XL5 speed controller, a, it's old TQ radio, put a battery connector on it, plug a battery in, run it full throttle. Uh, make sure there's no pinion on the motor because you don't want any uh, unsprung weight on the motor. I, I'm just taking a baseline as the motor sits with nothing on it. Then I get my numbers. So anyway, so you, let's say you just got a brand new motor from the hobby shop, cost you 26 bucks, okay? You take it home, you wanna throw it in your car, don't do that, okay? Because the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do a break-in. So what is a break-in? How do I do my break-ins? So you're gonna need a, a water jug, a mason jar, something to, to submerge the motor in. Again, there's detailed guides out there, but basically you're going to, you're gonna set up something similar to this actually and you're gonna hook your motor up to it. You're gonna use the trim to make the motor turn. And you're, what I do is I do a 20 minute break-in, 20 minutes, and I'll take the, the motor out. I'll clean the motor. Now it's very important, make sure you're using the, the Lectra. CRC makes a couple different versions of this. This is the one you want. The other one can leave like a black residue on the actual motor, uh, the commutator. Make sure you're using the Electra Motive electric parts cleaner. This is this is the best stuff. Okay, it's I don't know eight bucks a can or whatever. Um, so you're gonna do your 20 minute break in in the water. You're gonna pull your motor. You're gonna change the water. You're gonna spray it out, and then you're going to oil both bushings. This is a bushing, and this is a bushing over here. Make sure you're using a petroleum based oil. So what I use is a three in one machinist oil. Um, my thought is that machinists are doing things much more precise than us. 
and it's a petroleum based oil and it's very light and I haven't had any issues with that oil. So you do your 20 minute break in. Now you're, what you're gonna do is you're gonna change your water. Change the water. And then you're gonna do your cleaning, which I just described with your CRC um, and your oil and all that. You're gonna do another 20 minutes in the water. Again, fresh water. Then you're gonna do your cleaning again. I know this sounds repetitive, but this is the way it goes. Then you're gonna change your water again, and then you're gonna do an additional 10 minutes, okay? After you get through this break-in period, what you wanna do is you wanna take a flashlight. You wanna stick the flashlight on the end bell and peer through the side. What you should see, and I, I, this can be impossible to get on camera, so I'm just gonna describe it. What you should see is a perfectly clean copper commutator. It shouldn't have any black on it. It shouldn't have any um, rough edges. And at that point, I consider that motor race ready. Air it out, clean it out, oil, put it in your car, you're ready for race day, okay? Now, what do you do post-race? So my process post-race is you take the motor out of the car, okay? You get yourself a bottle of Brasso. So what is Brasso? Brasso is a light abrasive for brass, bronze, pewter, aluminum, chrome, stainless, and copper. The commutators on these motors are copper, okay? Get yourself a Q-tip. Put a little bit of Brasso on the Q-tip. Take the Q-tip, slide it inside the end bell, touching the commutator. Put, I don't know, maybe a pea-sized drop on this side. Put a pea-sized drop on this side. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna hand turn the motor towards the red cable. And it's gonna sound, it's gonna have a grinding noise. Continue to do that until that grinding noise smooths out. Because what you're doing is you're using an abrasive with the brushes to clean that commutator. And when you're done, you know, doing maybe five minutes of turning, uh, you're gonna clean it again, parts cleaner, re-oil the bushings, and your motor will be race ready. Again, if you put a flashlight to the end and you look, you're gonna restore that very clean copper looking commutator that you had when the motor was brand new. So let's write that down. So you remove your motor from your car, you're gonna do Brasso, turn it until it smooths, the, the grinding smooths out. Turn until grinding smooths. Okay, then you're gonna clean the motor and then you're gonna put it back in your car after you oil it. That's it, that's it guys. And so let's just go back to talking briefly about what these motor builders are doing. They are they're doing this, they're slapping a sticker on the side of the can and they're selling it to you for 50, 75, I've seen $100 for some of these motors. Now. Are there unicorn 12 turn motors? Yes. Will you be able to compete in short course oval racing with this motor? Yes. What, what people I think fail to realize is that, the, that these big companies are, well, they're not even that big. These companies are selling you snake oil because what they're doing is they're buying these motors in bulk. They might buy 20, 30 at a time and they're analyzing them after a break-in process to see what's the best. They're keeping the top 1% for them and their drivers. I promise you, you're not getting the best of the best. You're getting everything else. And honestly, you can do that process yourself and you can have a chance at getting your own unicorn motor by following this process. Um, so the best motor I've ever pulled off of my watt meter was a 12, which is, it's 12 from I'm still using actually, uh, was pulling 50 watts at 5.8 amps. So this is a 46 at 5.6. This is a 44 at 5.0. These are both good motors. I could put these in my car tomorrow and go out and compete. Just because I have one motor that's you know three or four watts higher, is it faster? Sure. Do you need that much speed on the track? No. I mean, this is, it goes back to how um, you know, the brushless motors are set up. You're not using all the power on these short course tracks. So guys, I hope this video is helpful. <clears throat> I really, I really want people to just 
understand the process because I think people think that, that these motors are being quote unquote built. They're not being built. No one's opening these things. And if people are telling you that they're opening them, they're full of shit because any tech person worth their salt what can tell if this has been opened. These are incredibly difficult to open. You will damage the end bell by trying to pry into this. And even if you do get into it, you know, the wires are all epoxied together. Like it would cause major destruction to this motor if you took it apart. And I don't, it's not worth it. Now, are some guys doing some other sketchy stuff? Yes. I've heard of people taking a 10.5 brushed motor and then they're putting us a, a, the 12 turn sticker over it i've heard of people doing that um again there there's always unethical people in racing but if you're trying to save yourself some money to get a good competitive motor try this process okay i mean i just had last week i just had a guy come up to me he's like you know i bought one of those motors and he's like you're faster than me like would, can i pay you to set up my car and i'm like buddy i'll tell you everything i'm doing and this is this is my motor routine this is what you do at the beginning. When you first get the motor, this is the weekly um, cleaning and basically maintenance. This is a maintenance motor. So guys, I hope this, hope this is helpful. Uh, like, subscribe, let me know uh, if you wanna see more content like this and uh, we'll see you in the next one.